hello, hello, hello. This has been like the craziest, craziest, craziest day for me. So um, I'm sitting here haywire. Um, finals, um, just going through finals with seminary this week, a lot of writing, a lot of work, a lot of reading, a lot, a lot, a lot. And then other things like just drama, just a cancellation today um, with a guest that was supposed to be on the show. And so then I'm heavily in scribe mode today because um, I just, I, I, I was writing, I was writing. And so I'm gonna share with you what I have written. And um, so one of the things when I was writing is that I heard a word, I heard a word to share. And the word that I heard to share, it may be for you, it may not be for you, I don't know. But here it goes. Um, Cause it's just, you, you know how when you're, you're you, you hear very strong or I hear very strongly and I know that God is saying something and that I was to bring this here and share it. So remember when God and Satan were having that conversation about Job. So they're talking about Job and Satan asks, um, or, or God asks Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And Job, um, um, Satan goes into, you know, basically saying, what's the point? You know, you, you know, you got a hedge around him and I can't get to him. You have a hedge around his house. This is Job 1 and 10. Um, thou hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. And so that hedge that Satan was acknowledging that was around Job is also around you. That hedge is around you. It's around your house and it's around everything that you have on every side. And so what that means is that in every circumstance of your life, God has placed a hedge of protection around you. There's a fence, there's a boundary, there's a separator that has been placed by God around you and it serves as protection around your relationships, around your home, around your purpose, around your calling, around your sanity. And, and at the same time, you have to guard that hedge. You have guardianship over the hedge that God has created and how do you um, exercise this guardianship? By first of all, acknowledging that the hedge is there. And second of all, by having discernment when that hedge is, 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 um, is being breached. And so any time that you start second guessing something that you know, second guessing your intuition, then you're losing your guard over the hedge. Um, you're, 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 you're losing your footing and, and, you know, there are certain obstacles and hindrances that you are not supposed to overcome. And, and those things, those obstacles, those certain obstacles, those certain hindrances are things that God has placed. Um, he's causing the obstacle. He's causing the hindrance. He's causing the re resistance. And it's not something that you are to override, but you have to have um, discernment around that. You have to be able to acknowledge it, understand it, and have discernment around it. And the second thing is that you, um, you know, you have to come in alignment with what it is that God is doing, what that protection is about. You have to recognize it, realize it, and um, come in alignment with that. And so I saw this message the other day, and it said that a true patriot gets a parking ticket and celebrates that the system works. And so the system of God, the kingdom of God, the ways of God, his wisdom, his word, everything uh, pertaining to God, pertaining to you, it works, but you have to let it work. And so whatever is going on right now, let it be, let it be. Don't try to override whatever that, that hedge is trying to hedge you in around. You know, somebody may be trying to breach it. Something may be trying to breach it. Let it be. Don't override it. Let it be. Let it go. And don't be mad at the person either that, that God is, you know, maybe pushing out. You know, today it was very, it would have been very easy for me to get upset about the fact that, you know, the guest didn't come. But the thing is, is that there, there's a hedge of protection. There's something. There, Thing, everything happens for a reason. And whatever is happening in your circumstance right now, it is happening for a reason. Let it be. Don't try to override um, and, and, and uh, protect yourself. Let the hedge be what it was created to be in your life. 
Okay, and so I am Elena Odessa and I welcome you to the 40th episode of the Cultivate and Bloom show. This is the 40th episode and 40 is so special because um, 40 is about moving from a season of testing um, and, and, and a time where, you know, we were being exercised in a validation to move into maturity, to move into new development. And so I'm very excited about this show. And if you knew all the things that had gone on on the backside uh, to try to uh, interfere with this show happening, for me to cancel, for me to, you know, not show up and all this, um, you would... You, you would see the importance of it. And so I just, I just want to bless you. I want to bless you being in this, um, uh, this, 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 the energy of 40 with this episode. I want to bless you. I want to bless you if you've been watching. I want to bless you. I want to bless Matt for, for the engineering, Pamela, for the, the, the uh, camera work, uh, Lee and, and Pam Cheryl for the station. Just, just, just the blessing of new development is just on us. It's on you. And I just speak that blessing over you right now. And increase, 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 increase in, in movement in this new development. Okay. And so what's the, 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 the word for today? It's in John 1, John 1 and 1. And in John 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, so this is not like the account that we see in Genesis because in the account that we see in Genesis, God is using the word to create. And here he's not, he's not making anything. Here, um, Genesis 1 tells us how God made. It tells us what God made and it tells us how God made. John 1 is telling us who God is in relationship to the word. And, you know, he, he's not introducing God and then tying the word in. He's not saying in the beginning was God and, you know, da, 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 da. He's saying in the beginning was the word. And so this is very important for us to realize as we come into greater relationship, as we come into greater understanding about who God is. God is the word and what is, um, what is pertaining to language is what God is. What is pertaining to communication is what God is. It, he is all of that. He is the thought because you can't have the thought without the word. He is the spoken word. You can't have the language without the word. You can't have the, the emotion without the word. All of those things go together. And so this is not what about what God did with the word. This is about God being the word. And, you know, the, the, the definition of being, it means to exist in actuality and to have life, to have um, an existence in life, to have an existence in reality. It also means to occupy a specified position. And so the specified position of God is the word, the specified position of God is language. And third, B means to take place, to occur, to happen. And so, and I've said it before, but the word is everything. The word is everything. It is the occurrence of all life and is, it is the occurrence of everything that pertains to life. And so nothing could happen without the word. If we didn't have the word, there'd be no communication. There'd be no emotions. There'd be no thoughts. There'd be no, no, uh, there'd be no relationships. There'd be no communion. There'd be no earth. God used the word to speak the earth, the heavens and the earth into existence. And the thing that he used to speak into existence before he spoke he was that thing. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so this is, is, is very powerful. And so as we begin to look at the word, as we begin to just kind of continue to study this thing around the stewardship of the resurrection, I wanted us to look at how the word of God changes shape and how the 
the how how the word of God changes shape and how the word of God shifts in its existence. It shifts in its existence and at the same time it is what it is. And so it's becoming something and, and even in its becoming it is still what it is. And we can we can see this as we look at Christ and how Christ changed and how he shape shifted into different manifestations of the word. And so First, Christ exists as the word that was in the beginning, the word that was in the beginning um, right here in John 1, 1. He is uh, spoken in the spirit and he is, well, actually, he's not spoken in the spirit right here because he's spoken in the spirit. He's not spoken in the natural because there is nothing in the natural. The natural doesn't exist yet. Only the spirit exists right here. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, so we've got that. And then we see Christ moving from this uh, existence as being the word that was God and the word that was with God. And we see him moving into um, existing now uh, when people do exist. God has made us now. And so we have an existence of Christ as the word in prophecy. He's the word that is prophesied. And then he moves from that unto the, the, the word of God that is now made flesh. And so then there's this season where he's, he's the word with God. Then there's this season where he exists as the word is prophecy. And now we're in this season where he exists as the son who is made flesh. And then there's a season where he exists as the lamb of God. There's a season where he exists as the, 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 the exists in the resurrection where he exists as the right hand of God, as he exists as the word who is coming. He's the groom who's coming back for his bride. He exists as the everlasting king. And it's just, it's inexhaustible. So you can talk about the, the different uh, shapes, the different manifestations, the different appearances, the different functions of the word who is Christ, who was the word that was with God and was the word that was God language. And, the reason why it's inexhaustible is because everything hinges on the word. Everything comes from it. It is the beginning. It is the source of all. And so um, I wanted us to look at this because when we get an understanding, when we get a revelation of this, then we begin to understand the power in the truth that the word has a life of its own. It has a life of its own. We talked about it last week that the word is incorruptible seed, incorruptible seed. And so then when we begin to get a revelation on our relationship with the word and how we are stewarding the word. And not just because we have to give an account for it, which we do. Of how we used every idle word in our speech and in our thoughts and in our actions, but also because the word is is the makeup of our lives. The word and our relationship to the word is the makeup of our experiences. It is the makeup of everything. And so we exist according to the word that we believe. We experience life according to the word that we have relationship with. You and I are, are, are living the lives, we're having the experiences that we're having right now because of our relationship with the word. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. There's no other reason. There's no other, uh, uh, th there, there's no other possibility that produces our existence right now than our relationship with the word. And so, you know, we talked about it a little bit last week with the, the if there's a, um, an experience of poverty. It's because there is a relationship with poverty. There's a, there's a belief system around poverty in the belief system. You can't have a belief system without the language, without the word that, 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 that put that belief system in your heart and put that belief system in my mind and put us in, uh, yoked us. We are yoked to the word. We're yoked to the word that we understand. We're yoked to the word that we believe. We're, we're, we're yoked to the word that we know. And this is why the scripture says in all thy getting, get understanding because we have to get a revelation. We have to get not just a revelation, but an understanding of the revelation that we have gotten. If we want to begin to, uh, 
re-communicate, if we want to begin to reshape, if we want to begin to realign, if we want to begin to resurrect ourselves according to the word that God has spoken over our lives, according to the promises that he has reserved and spoken for us, uh, the things that he meant for us to experience. And so in, in talking about that, the, the stewardship of the resurrection, um, that resurrection power that exists on the inside of you, that resurrection power that you are functioning in right now. This is the season of, of, of this, this, the, the Christ being in his resurrected body. And so we are being uh, invited. We are being um, uh, uh, brought into an opportunity to create, to manifest a resurrection in our own lives, to be resurrected in our own lives unto not that which was spoken over us as children, not that which was um, deemed possible for us in whatever environment that we were reared in, but what is your desire? What is, on, what, ha, what is your God-given desire? What has God given you to want? What is the thing that God has given you to uh, use the word seed to sow, to produce after? What is that thing? And this is the season right here in order to, to get a revelation, in order to, to, to get an understanding, and in order to bring ourselves into alignment with this because the resurrection power is in our mouths. The resurrection power is in our understanding. The resurrection power is in our sphere of influence. We don't have to just uh, uh, live by whatever happens. We don't have to just take it however it comes. We have a sphere, we have a circle of influence and that circle of influence that we have is in our mouths and it is, it is defined by our understanding of and our relationship to the word the word, the language, the spoken word. And so, you know, in talking about the word being incorruptible seed, if there is word, uh, 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 if there is a relationship with the word that you have had in the past, that I have had in the past, that we do not desire to experience that particular harvest anymore, things that we've spoken, things that we put out there, things that we thought, things that we've, you know, believed, um, identity issues, things that, that, that have been in existence, things that have been um, occurring, that have been happening according to the word that we have um, been speaking and thinking and feeling and all of this. If there's something that we want to cut off, we want to cut that relationship off and then begin a new relationship. How do we do that? How do we do that? How do we redefine? How do we resurrect? How do we move into this newness of this resurrection power to produce, to, to, to be intentional about the harvest that we receive? Okay, so first of all, it's like five or uh, five, maybe six little points here. The first thing that we have to do is we have to determine what it is that we want. We have to define our desire. And so, what harvest is it that you desire to plant? Because until you know that, you can't sow the proper word seed in order to grow that thing up. You have to have um, not just a clarity, but you have to have a determination around that clarity. You have to have a determination around that desire that you want to bring, that you desire to bring, that you have been created to bring, called to bring into existence in this season. And that determination is a manifestation of the word. Just like Christ moved through those, you know, son of God, the word, the, 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 the word um, dwelling with us, that incarnated word, just like he moved the groom, just like he moved into the resurrection, just like he moved into the lamb, just like he moved, he moved. And yet all of those existed at one time when we make a determination. Now we are still who we were. We are still, those experiences are still, um, uh, part of our experience, but yet we are now manifesting a new experience around the word. We're manifesting a new experience of the word in our lives based on this determination. Number two, 
what I determine that I want for the purposes of this example is success. I want success. And so I think on success. This is number two. Thought is another manifestation of the word. Your thought life. You have to watch your thoughts. You have to watch your meditations. Watch the things that you're thinking on. And when you witness yourself thinking something other than or thinking something that is against that determination that you have, something that's against that thing that you desire to manifest, then you have to, you, you have to reassign. You have to redirect. You have to redirect your thought life. You have to pull that thought down and you have to be intentional on what you think. You, you are not your thoughts. You are the thinker of your thoughts. And so you have control over that. You can, you can determine what it is that you think about. Thoughts just don't have to happen to you. And, and when we're not conscious of our relationship with the word as it pertains to thoughts, then that is exactly what happens. Our thoughts just happen. They just, you know, they just, they, they, they take over in there. But th this is a time to have stewardship over the word thought. This is time to have dominion over that word thought because you're, you're, you're tuned in, you're determined You've marked that desire. You've, you've spoken what that desire is that you uh, want to or, or determined what that desire is that you want to bring into existence. And now you're cultivating that on purpose by uh, being a, a good steward, a conscious steward of your thoughts. And so the third piece, what I want is success. I'm thinking thoughts of success, determined success, thinking thoughts of success, and now I speak success. We talked about this in the last uh, episode, episode 39. You speak after the word that you intend to create. Success is what I'm creating. I speak the word. I speak it out loud. I speak it often. Faith confessions are so powerful because not only are you speaking the thing, which is a creator, you're also hearing the thing that you're speaking which is how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That does not mean that we just go someplace and, you know, we sit passively and we listen, you know, to the word of God uh, taught by leaders, teachers, uh, whoever. We do do that. But at the same time, we are also, we, we have the power to speak. We have the authority to speak. And so we can speak ourselves. I'm not subject to what this teacher is teaching or what this pastor is preaching. I'm not, I'm not subject to that. I can speak. I can create faith confessions around that, which I desire to create. I, you know, I, I am a success. God perfects all things that concern me. You need to hear that. And you don't need to just wait for somebody to come into your sphere to speak that to you. You can speak that over your own life. So you speak, you call things in, you make decrees, you make declarations, you speak according to the word that you desire to create. And, and, and you're, you're saying and you're hearing at the same time. Hallelujah. That's another manifestation of the word. So we're manifesting, we're creating, we're creators. We are here to create. And so what we're doing right now is manifesting. And so another way, number four, is to get yourself a picture around success. If that's your word, this is my word. So then I would get myself a picture of success. What does success look like to me? What does success mean to me? Imagery. I have image, uh, images that that's another manifestation of the word. Images are huge. This is why vision boards are so powerful when they're properly used because when we surround ourselves with images that speak to what we have determined that it is that we want to create, that when we, we, um, we, images that speak to what it is that we have determined that we want to manifest in our lives, then we, we have these visual reminders, these visual reminders. Our vision is now stamped in a different way. Our vision, it becomes sewn in because images support the vision. Just like confessions, they work on several layers. The picture now speaks to you. Every time you see that image, every time you see that picture, your eye gate is being affected. And, and also your, your thought gate is being affected because you have thoughts around the picture that you see. Hallelujah. And then, I mean, just, just add to, to, to that. Speak. Speak to it. Speak to the picture. I will have that which I see. 
I will have that which I see. God told Abraham, look as far as you can, as far as you can, and, and, and imagine, count it if you can, but look at it to imagine that is how abundant your seed is going to be when he was telling him to look to the stars. And so we bring imagery into our own experience when we determine that this is a tool that we're going to use and we're creating on a multi-layer uh, manifestational effect or, or plane or, or yes. Okay. And so number five, study. So we study and this example, success, I would study the word on success. What does the word have to say about success? Because we determined that the word of God, that it, it, it is the spirit of God. It is the spirit of the word. The word of God is the spirit. This is his word spirit right here. And so when we use the word to shape the word, then we're partnering with the spirit of the word to transform our circumstances. We're partnering with the spirit of the word to manifest in unspeakable ways. This is the, the, the map. This is the trajectory that God has given us to shape our lives. And so I would use a thesaurus and I would look up success in the thesaurus. And I did. Uh, prosperity, fruit, triumph, victory, wealth, progression. These are the words that are synonymous with success. And so now I go to the concordance. I go to Strong's concordance. It's an exhaustive concordance. And I find what the scripture says on success. I find what the scripture says on prosperity, on fruit and fruitfulness, on triumph, on victory, on wealth, on progression, on movement, on growth. And then I study that out. I study that out. And then I can make confessions about that, write out faith confessions. I can get visuals that speak to that. I mean, we just you, you we, we build on this so that we can manifest this word in our lives so that we can create a harvest around that which we purpose and desire to create a harvest around and not just be used by the word, not just to use the word and not be used by language to, to, to bring it into subjection and make it subject to us, make our thoughts subject to us, make our conversation subject to us, our conduct subject to that which we have determined that we want to create in our lives. And so I hope this blessed you. Um, yeah, this is the season. This is the time of new development. This is, th there's a line of demarcation. And when we draw that line in the sand and we determine that we are going to step over that line as a new person, in a new function, in a new relationship with the word, then we have postured ourselves to create the life that God promised, purposed, called, and planned for us to have. In Jesus' name, I bless you, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Cultivate and Bloom Show. Bye-bye.